Hey guys, welcome to this lower body workout. You are gonna need a little bit of equipment for this workout. You're gonna need yourself a step or a chair, so something that you can step up onto comfortably. I've also grabbed myself a yoga block, which I'm going to be using as a rear elevated split squat. So it doesn't have to be high. You could just use a book or you might actually not need it at all. And also a light weight, but pretty much all of these things are optional, bar a little bit of a step for you to step up on. Anyway, we're gonna start with a quick warm up. So we're gonna come down onto the floor and we're gonna start with just pushing ourselves up into some upward dogs. So elbows are gonna be beneath your shoulders, spread your fingers out, push your chest up nice and high. Look forward and then come back down nice and gently. I'm just gonna work at your own pace. So whatever speed feels good for you, just an opportunity to warm up your body, warm up your mind and get ready for the workout ahead. You can make this a little bit bigger by bringing your hands back a bit further. Last couple here and we are done. Nice work. We're gonna move into some planks into downward facing dogs, get some warm up through our core. So come up into a high plank with your hands beneath your shoulders. And then from here, you can keep your legs bent. We're going to push our hips up nice and high, really reach our hips as high as to the ceiling as possible, and then come forward into our high plank and then push back. And we're just gonna move through this movement at our own pace. You can start to extend your legs a little bit straighter. If you want, you can pad on your heels. It always feels really, really nice to do that. We've got 10 seconds left here. Again, just working at your own speed keeping those hips nice and high, making that movement ever so much bigger every time. Nice work. And we're gonna move into our third warm-up exercise of five. We're gonna do glute bridges. So heels on the floor, about hip distance apart. You're gonna tilt your pelvis up, create some posterior pelvic tilt, so tailbone towards the ceiling. From here, we're gonna push up onto our shoulders, through our heels, and squeeze our glutes. So you're looking for that nice squeeze that you can feel here. When you come down, try not to let your bum touch the ground if possible. Keep your core switched on at all times. We've only got 15 seconds here, so let's start to speed this up a little bit. This is a lower body workout after all. Nice work. We're gonna be coming up onto our feet in about five seconds. So the last couple here, let's do one more. Nice work. All right, up onto our feet. We're just gonna do some side to side lunges. So feet are gonna come out nice and wide about just wider than shoulder width. It's gonna point those toes and knees out slightly towards the edges of the room. Keep your chest up nice and high, hands at your chest, and just gonna sit back into your bum. Come back into the corner, push up through that heel. Really spread your foot out, so you're spreading your weight through your entire foot that you're pushing from, and keep that chest up nice and high. We're gonna to start to speed these up a little bit. Just go as low as is comfortable for you. Again, this is just a warm up, so we're not doing anything too strenuous here. We've got five seconds and we've got one more exercise. Nice work. The last exercise that we're gonna do is we're just gonna warm up through some good mornings. So you put one foot out in front of you. It's gonna come up onto that heel. And then from there, you're going to bring your hands down and scoop up as if you're scooping a big bowl of water. And you should feel this all the way down the back of your leg. So I'm gonna come up, big circle around. Again, you only need to come where you're comfortable. For me, I don't need to come very far at all to be able to feel it. We're just warming up here. Just do one more on this side. Beautiful work. And then I'm gonna switch legs. So bring that left leg out. And we're gonna scoop around. I think it's time for me to have coffee already. That's not a good sign. <laughs> I'm already jumbling my words. All right, guys, that is your warm-up complete. Go have a 30-second rest, grab some water so you have some nearby, and I will see you here for round one. All right guys, let's get stuck into some work. So this workout consists of three rounds, each having six exercises each, which we're gonna do for 45 seconds and then have a 15 second rest. 
Each round, I'm gonna make the exercises just slightly harder, but it's up to you where you wanna stay. So if you're happy with round one, just keep doing that throughout the workout. And slowly, as you do this workout more often, you'll progress through them. So we're gonna start with split squats to begin with. So you're gonna have your right leg come out in front, and then your left leg is gonna just be slightly behind, about a foot behind your heel. From here, chest up nice and high, and it's gonna bring that leg down towards the ground. You want your knee to be just under an inch from the ground, very, very close, and then you're gonna push back up. Try to spread your weight throughout your full foot in front. Keep your core nice and strong, chest up nice and high as you push back up. And you can breathe in on the way down, push up, breathe out. Keeping nice and strong. You always want your core through any exercise to be nice and strong. So you want to think about tensing it as if someone's going to come and punch you in the stomach. Now we're here for 45 seconds. We've got six seconds left. So we can squeeze a couple more in here. Push through that full foot, one more. Nice work. All right, we've got a 15 second rest. We're going to switch to the other side. Obviously, we want to train both sides. So we'll set ourselves up. Left foot comes out in front. Right foot is about a foot behind your heel. Chest up nice and high. You can have your hands on your hips. You can have them here. Whatever you fancy, it's up to you. And off we go. So that knee comes down towards the ground. And you want to think about coming straight down and straight up rather than coming forward or coming back. So straight down, push up through that front foot all the way to the top. Don't forget to regulate your breathing. Go whatever speed feels good for you. Nice work. Now you've got 45 seconds, which is plenty of time. It means it gives you an opportunity to try the movement out. You know, if you need to reposition your feet, then that's absolutely fine. Work out the progression that works for you and really focus on your form. As always, I do these in time rather than reps because I want you to focus on quality, not quantity. All right, that's our time up. We've got 15 second rest and we're moving into step ups. So you're gonna grab whatever step you're using. I'm gonna use this chair. So I'm gonna move that into view for you guys. I'm gonna do alternating step ups. So heel comes onto the chair. You wanna try and keep your chest up as nice and high as possible. Push through that heel and step up and then control all the way back down. And then we're gonna switch side. Try not to overthink this movement. It's easy to give you loads of form cues for it, but simply just think about walking up a really big staircase and don't overthink it. We know this movement pattern. Our body is used to it. We just simply want to make it stronger. What I would prefer to avoid is trying to haul yourself up using momentum. That's what we want to minimize as much as possible. But there's always going to be a certain aspect of that, especially if you're stepping up onto something a little bit higher. So just think about trying to stay upright as much as possible. Push through the heel that's on the step and then control that down phase. And that says done, 15 seconds over. We're moving over to a wall. That's one thing I forgot to mention. You're gonna need a bit of wall space. We're gonna do a wall sit for 45 seconds. So you're gonna sink down into a seated position. You wanna brace your back against the wall. Try to squeeze your core together so that your lower back actually pushes into the wall as well. So you're creating a bit of tension and you want your hips to be in line with your knees if possible. And we're just gonna stay here. Sometimes these are the hardest ones, the ones where you're not actually moving. But we've got this, we can do it. And then after this one, we've got good mornings, which are always a nice exercise, and then a plank. So can't neglect that core, even if it is a lower body workout, it always involves a little bit of core. So that's super important. Now don't forget to regulate your breathing. We've only got seven seconds here. It goes quicker than you think. Four, three, two, one, nice work, come up nice and slowly. You can shake that off, that feels good. <laughs> we set ourselves up for our good morning. So your feet are gonna be hips distance apart. This is a hip hinge movement. So you wanna try and think about keeping your torso and your spine straight. So from here, just doing body weight, you're gonna bend at the hips, keeping your back nice and straight, shoot your hips back and then you're gonna come back up. You only need to come as low as where you feel the resistance. For me, I can't come that low, so it's about here, and then we're gonna come back up. The important thing is you keep your torso nice and straight, and you really do hinge at the hip as if you're going to shut a car door or there's a wall behind you that you want to tap. And if you need to, you can stand with a wall behind you and try to think about touching it with your bum first. But essentially what we want to avoid is curling our spines like this. So just coming down, keep that bend, soft knees, 
come back up, and that is you done. One more exercise to go, a 45 second plank. Some people love it, some people hate it. It really is a Marmite exercise, a bit like burpees. Although I would err on the side of caution that most people don't like burpees. All right, we're gonna set ourselves up. We're gonna come into a high plank. Of course, if this isn't accessible for you at the moment, you can be here on your knees, whatever works for you. Just do what is challenging for you because that is still gonna benefit you just as much as anything else. Keep your core nice and strong. We wanna avoid coming too far forward. We don't wanna to come too far back and we definitely don't want to be drooping here in the middle. So nice and strong. Again, imagine someone's gonna come punch you in the stomach and you're really tensing your core. Eyes out, just in front of you. Try not to have your head up too high or too low. 10 seconds here. I'll stop talking for a few seconds. Give you guys a bit of peace. Two and one. Awesome work, guys. All right, go towel off, have a little bit of water and I will see you back here for round two. All right, let's get stuck into round two. We're gonna make these exercises just a little bit harder. Of course, if you wanna stay with what we did in round one, then you can do that. That is 100% totally fine. We're gonna start with our split squats. Now, to make these a little bit harder, we're gonna do some rear foot elevated split squats. So I'm gonna use a yoga block, but you can use anything you've got, even just a really big book or something like that. Uh, you're gonna place that behind. So right foot comes in front, left foot goes behind. And essentially what we're doing by raising our rear foot is just increasing the range of motion that we're going to be moving through. So we just have to come a little bit lower with that knee. So we're gonna still come to just about an inch off the floor. Everything else stays the same. So you want your feet to be about hips distance apart, pushing all your weight spread through that front foot. Chest stays up nice and high looking forward. I'm just gonna push straight up and then come straight back down rather than moving forward or back. Keep moving in a nice, slow and controlled manner. That's the most important thing. Of course, if this is too challenging, get rid of the step. You can just do 10 seconds with the step and then the rest just regular. But that is it done. 45 seconds, we're gonna switch sides, bring my step back in. And we're gonna elevate the other foot now. So left foot comes forward, right foot behind, hips distance apart. Nice strong core, big deep breath, let's go. So you get to listen to all the lovely cracks in my knees. That's a question that comes up a lot in exercise when people actually hear me exercise, usually on Instagram, is, is it okay if your knee cracks or your ankle cracks or something like that? And generally, yes, that's not a problem at all. If it's not associated with any pain or discomfort, you've not got any injuries that are really hurting you, then it's absolutely fine. It's totally normal and my foot cracks every step I take, believe it or not. It's extremely frustrating, especially when I'm hiking. Um, but yeah, not a problem to worry about. All right, we've got five seconds left here. Let's keep going, a couple more reps. Nice work. Beautiful, done. And get rid of that for now. And we're moving into our step ups. So grab yourself your step. To make this harder, you could just use a higher step, but I've got the same thing here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a knee drive, which means I've gotta use my core a little bit more and also challenges my balance. So we're gonna come up, knee drives up towards your chest, come back down, switch legs, weight through the heel, come back up, knee towards the chest, back down. So we wanna really control this entire movement if possible. I've got my hands up here. You can have them at your hip. It really doesn't matter. I just naturally always put them in front of me. It means I engage my core a little bit more. Just challenges my balance slightly. 
we're halfway through. You got this, let's try and speed this up a little bit. But if you need to go a bit slower, honestly, I'd prefer that. Quality over quantity always. One more. Right, we're moving on to our next exercise, which is wall sits, you guys know. So, heading over to our wall. This time, I'm gonna put my hands behind my head and I'm just gonna add a little bit more core work into it. So, hands coming up, push that lower back into the wall. I don't have a huge amount of space here. Hopefully you guys can see me all right, but I'm sure you're in a world of your own here at the moment. <laughs> We're only here for 45 seconds, so keep nice and strong, keep the weight spread throughout your feet. Core engaged, breathe. Awesome work, we've only got five seconds left to go. You've got this, come on. Four, three, two, and one. Nice work. Nice and slowly come up. Shake it off, always feels good. And we're gonna move into our good mornings. I'm gonna keep these at body weight. With good mornings, you can add a barbell, you can add dumbbells if you want, but we're gonna keep them body weight at the moment just because it's a hip hinge. But what I will do is put my hands behind my head. So, soft knees, and we're gonna hinge at the hip. Coming forward, keeping that torso nice and straight. I'll do it from a side view so you guys can see what my movement is. So I'm gonna come forward and then just to where I feel the resistance and then come back up. You wanna spread your toes out, spread your weight through your feet. Push your hips back. Nice work. If having your hands on your head is just a bit too much, just go back to this, having them at your hips. Maybe it helps because you can imagine pushing your hips back and you can feel a bit more what your body's doing. Whatever works for you, just build up slowly but surely. And that is you done. All right, guys, you know what's next. It's our plank. So we're gonna come down to the floor. You could just stick with our regular plank, but to make it slightly harder, I'm going to do a slightly extended plank. So hands are gonna come out just about half a foot in front. We're gonna come up into our high plank position. Just because our hands are a bit further in front, we don't want to come up like this. We still want to be nice and long, core engaged. And just stay here, focus on your breathing. We're over halfway there, we've not got long to go. This is the last exercise of the round and then you've got a rest coming up. Keep that core nice and strong. Don't let yourself sag down, keep up. 10 seconds left. <laughs> nice work guys, good job. All right, that is round two done. We only have one more to go. Go grab yourself some water and I will see you back here in one minute. All right guys, we have made it to the last round. We're gonna start with our split squats. So if you're with me, we're gonna be doing the rear foot elevated ones. But to make these just a little bit harder, as always, you can add a little bit of weight. So we're gonna start with our right leg forward. Left leg is going to be the elevated one. And it's gonna hold the weight at your shoulder, come down and then push back up. If you want, you can just hold it in one hand or you can hold it like a bow tie in front of you. Completely up to you. And of course, whatever weight you use is up to you as well. 
So you can make it as hard or as easy as you want. Maybe you just wanna have a day where you don't work at such a high capacity. Maybe it's just a bit of active recovery or some movement for mental health. Whatever it is, just you do you. That's the most important thing. Keep that core nice and strong, chest up nice and high. Got 10 seconds left, we can squeeze a couple more in here. Five, four, three, two, and one. Nice work. Have a quick shake it off, rest. We're gonna switch sides. We're gonna have our left foot forward, right foot back. And if you're with me, we're gonna hold the dumbbell at our chest. So set this up and let's get cracking. 45 seconds here. Don't forget to spread your weight through your front foot. So you want to be pushing up predominantly through your heel or through the midfoot, but really spread your weight through it. Straight down and straight back up again. I'm starting to feel this work now. Round three, it always starts to get a bit more serious. 10 seconds left here. Just stick with it. Wherever you are, three, two, and squeeze one more in. Nice work. All right, let's move that equipment to the side. We're gonna work into our step ups. Before we did knee drives, this time I'm just gonna add the weight again. So I'm just gonna hold on to this weight, keep it at my shoulder, and actually I'll put it as a bow tie because we're doing alternating. So I'm gonna come up, core nice and strong. Literally everything else stays the same. I'm trying to minimize the momentum, trying to control that movement as much as possible, both up and down. Keep your core nice and strong, pushing up through that heel, but also trying not to overthink it, which is very hard to do sometimes. So don't forget to breathe. You can breathe out on the way up, breathe back in on the way down. If this is getting too challenging, just drop the weight and go back to your body weight, or you can go back to your knee drive. You literally can do whatever works for you. Nice work, we are done. Let's get rid of that for now. We are going to head into our wall sits. So we're gonna come over here. Last time we had our hands up behind our head. We're gonna do the same this time. And we're just gonna stay here for 45 seconds. Nice and strong. Keep that lower back pressed into the wall. So to do that, you want to create some posterior pelvic tilt. So tilt your pelvis forward, tailbone towards the other side of the room. Push that lower back in. Really minimize the space between your hips and your ribs. And then we stay here, keep those elbows back against the wall. Weight in your heels. We've got this, 15 seconds to go. Don't forget to breathe. Nice work. Last bit, well done guys, come up, shake it out. I always need to shake that one out. Into our good mornings. So feet are gonna come hip distance apart, facing forwards, hands up behind your head if you're with me, working into that hip hinge movement. So soft knees and we're gonna keep our back straight, bend forward, so you're bringing your chest forward, bum back. Only to a point that you feel the resistance, and then you're gonna come back up. Don't forget, as with every exercise, create that intra-abdominal pressure. So you wanna imagine someone's gonna punch you, or if you wanna think about it in another way, as if you're a big fizzy can of pop that someone's shaken up, and all that pressure inside. You almost wanna push your belly out. So you're coming down. Exercise isn't necessarily pretty, that's for sure. <laughs> Trust me, sometimes when I look back at this footage, I'm like, holy moly. <laughs> but. It's all part of it. And you always feel better once you've done it. Nice work. All right, we have one more exercise. You guys have got this. We're gonna do a plank. And I thought to make this harder for our last round, obviously you can do whatever you want. I think we'll do up and down planks, which 45 seconds of up and down planks. Whew, don't know why I'm doing it to myself. So we're gonna come down onto our elbows. From here, you're gonna step up onto your hands, come back down using the same hands. You want to try and minimize as much side to side movement as possible. Of course, you are going to move side to side when you're doing this. 
but we want to concentrate on keeping it as solid as possible and keeping your hips as parallel to the floor. You got this and alternating your leading hand every time. We don't want to just train one side of our body. We always want to try and make it as even as possible. 15 seconds, you got this. Nice work guys, we are done. Go towel off, have some water, come back to me and we will do a super quick cool down. Well done. All right guys, amazing work. Let's do a super quick cool down. It's only gonna be a couple of minutes. Let's start where we actually started at the beginning and we're gonna come into upward dog. So hands beneath your shoulders and you're just going to let your hips drop down. Just be quite passive with this one. Face forward, chest up and just breathe and relax. All the hard work is behind you now. So you can relish in that feeling, those post-workout endorphins. Awesome work. We're gonna sit back into child's pose. So knees are gonna come out slightly and we're just gonna sit back into our hips. If you need to, you can cross your arms, place your forehead on top of those, or if you can bring your chest a little bit lower, you're gonna sink down into the floor, hands in front of you. Take your hands over to the left. And over to the right. And then we're gonna walk our hands in nice and slowly and come back up. Let's go do a quick low lunge. So you're gonna bring your right foot forward, lean in a little bit. You can just have your hands on your knee, that's absolutely fine. Now this workout obviously was a lower body focus. It actually is adapted from the new program that I'm just about to put up on the app, which is a lower body program. It's a four week program, but you can extend it to eight or 12 weeks, whatever works for you. And you just basically need the equipment that we used in this workout. So if you wanna check it out, all the stuff will be down below. You can get your first month on the app for just $1. So you can check it out and you also get access to all the other programs on there as well, which is kind of fun. I'm gonna switch. Legs, left leg comes forward, and just lean in. But yeah, I always quite enjoy training lower body, um, especially at home, like I really like those functional movements, and I definitely noticed with, for example, step ups, how much my hiking improved when I started doing them more regularly. So, always something nice to include. All right, that is us done. Thank you so much for joining me. Well done on killing another workout and I will see you guys in the next video. Have an amazing day.